everybody. I'm going to show you a tool that I've been using a lot lately that's been able to help me actually do some pretty amazing things and save some samples that I thought I was going to have to do something drastic with. So let's say you can see that your sample is contaminated from using taxonomic classification and you don't know what you can do with it. Well, there's one thing you could do. You could do metagenomic binning to try to extract a good genome from both of those. Or you could use under FASTQ utilities, the align function to map the reads to that particular genome. This could be a really useful thing to do before RNA-seq when you're going to be doing that. So if you wanted to do a kind of dual RNA-seq, or you map to the vertebrate genome, and then you map to the bacterial or viral genome, actually bacterial genome in this case. So you could do both of those and run both of those through the pipeline. So let me show you this amazing tool. We go into tools and services and we click on FASTQ utilities. And the pipeline that I want to use is the Align pipeline. So I'm just going to leave that, put that here, and you have to add the plus box to bring it in. And then there's a particular genome that I want to align it to because I looked at it before. I could see using taxonomic classification that this bacterium was in there and it has this particular genome ID. And you notice it's got this one that is in 4.0. That's my own private genome. I want to use this guy that ends here. It's trying to match things for me. So it's going to align whatever reads I choose to this particular genome, which is called Wigglesworthia glossinidia. Let's go back to parameters. If you don't know or you haven't created a folder yet for your job, you could click on the folder icon, you could create a new one, or you could cruise through here to find one. Or if you've done one recently, you could click on the down arrow and choose that. And of course, I could always just start writing in the box and I could see all my recent folders that match that. So, and then choose the one that I want. And so what I'm going to do now, the name is important. Those are the read files that I'm going to use. And like I told you before, I like to do descriptive names for these things. Because often I come back to them like six months later and I'm thinking, what was I doing? What is this thing? I'm lost. So you notice the submit button. I still can't submit it because I haven't put the reads in. If I had created or uploaded reads before, or if I had maybe taken this sample and trimmed it, I could look here to see if I could find it here. So you could do paired or singled reads, but for this one, let's just use the accession number. And how great is this, right? We could get reads directly from the sequence read archive. They're all public. They're all there for you to analyze so that you can compare different data with yours. And this is the accession number and I have to move it over into the selected libraries box. So I click on this arrow here. And you notice there was a brief message that said it's validating it, making sure that this is an actual SRR number. And now look, here's the submit button. It's that glorious blue, meaning that we can submit it now. So let's click on that. And it says it has submitted the job. And pretty soon we'll see it down here in the jobs monitor. And it just popped up that it is currently running, although I suspect that means it's actually queued at this moment. And so what we're doing here is we're gonna see how many of the reads from this sample map to that particular genome. And then once I have that, I could do a number of things. I could assemble it. I could use it in the variation service. I could use it in RNA-seq. There's a number of things you can do once you have that. Thanks a lot. Bye.